Our son just told us he's getting married, but his bride is a little strange. Mom, Dad, we have something we'd like to tell you, my son said, producing a bottle of champagne from his backpack. Hold on, I'll get some glasses. I watched as he scurried across the living room to the glass cabinet, flinging it open and sliding four champagne flutes between his fingers. I glanced at my wife. Her face had turned a light shade of pink and her nails were frantically picking at a scab on her wrist. She was staring at Lindsay, the corners of her mouth twitching ever so slightly. Lindsay smiled back, an amicable expression on her face. Breathe, I whispered to her, and watched as her shoulders tensed up, it's going to be okay. Lindsay was our son Benjamin's latest. The two were inseparable and he insisted on bringing her along every time we invited him over for dinner. Benjamin was almost 35 years old, and while we had certainly expected to see him settle down eventually, I suppose we had hoped our only son would end up with someone more, like him. Like us. Ah, uh, honey, what is the champagne for? My wife asked, her voice quivering, D did you finally get that promotion at work? Benjamin scoffed, setting the flutes down on the coffee table and shaking his head, nah, they gave that to someone else. Fucking Alistair, of all people. Still, doesn't matter, Lindsay and I have some far more exciting news. I could almost feel my wife's anxiety permeating the room. From the corner of my eye, I could see blood trickling from the scab on her wrist, and snatched her hand away, gripping it firmly in mine. My son and Lindsay seemed oblivious to the interaction. So, Benjamin began, pouring out the champagne, mother, father, Lindsay and I have been together for more than a year now, and. My wife's nails dug into my palm. We love each other dearly and wish to spend every waking moment with one another. Droplets of sweat began forming on my upper lip. So, we have decided to tie the knot. My blood ran cold. My wife had gone pale, and I instantly knew she felt similar. I could tell by Benjamin's expression that he had expected applause and squeals of delight, but the room was silent, and after a few moments, his brow furrowed. What? He snapped, what are you looking at me like that for? Benjamin, I began, playing for time, we. Understand that. Lindsay is important to you. But we cannot in good conscience support this arrangement. What? He sounded bewildered, why the hell not? Lindsay is the love of my life. I looked over at Lindsay who was perched on the edge of the couch, her legs crossed. She was wearing a black strapless dress that barely covered her upper body and draped loosely over her waist and legs. Her expression remained unchanged. Ben, we think it's best if you see a. A professional, my wife interjected, you're such a handsome young man, there are plenty of women out there for you. There was a sharp whistling sound as Benjamin drew breath, and I felt my wife shrinking beside me. Lindsay is the perfect woman for me. Look at her, for God's sake. Show me a girl more perfect than her. She has perfect skin, perfect hair, and a body to die for. Plus. He exhaled, wiping the sweat away from his forehead, I have to marry her. We're having a baby. My wife and I stared at him, dumbfounded. My brain seemed to be at a loss for how to react. Sweat was pooling under my arms, and a slow chill was creeping up my spine. I wondered if our son had finally lost it. I wondered if this was one of those times where it was acceptable to wrestle a person to the ground and call the police. A-A-B baby? My wife whispered, a hand over her mouth, B but how? I knew I had to intervene. I got to my feet and placed my hands on Benjamin's shoulders. Son, Lindsay is not a real person. She is a sex doll. She cannot get pregnant or bear children, you must understand that. Now, sit down right here, let's make a cup of tea so we can all calm down and talk about this. With that, I brushed past him and headed for the kitchen, but Benjamin's next word stopped me in my tracks. You're wrong, dad, he said, his tone ominous, Lindsay is pregnant. He walked around the couch and propped her up by her arms, and if she isn't, how do you explain this? Benjamin pulled up Lindsay's flowy dress, exposing her lower body, clad in nothing but a pair of lace panties. I recoiled at the sight, but there was something else. A deformed bump in her stomach, far too large for her small frame. It extended towards her chest, bulging awkwardly in various places, as though it had been stuffed. My wife jumped up from the couch and shrieked, while I stood and stared at our son's exhibition, my skin prickling, W what is that? It's our baby, Benjamin rolled his eyes defiantly, are you blind or something? Benjamin, I said, shaking my head in disbelief, a sex doll cannot reproduce. It cannot give you a baby. Please, you're scaring your mother. Benjamin looked like he was about to go on another one of his angry rants, but his mother's expression seemed to ground him. He slumped down on the couch and buried his face in his hands. All right, 
he said, sorrowfully, all right. When we found out that Lindsay couldn't get pregnant, we knew we had to look for other solutions. So, we adopted. I stared at him, you a adopted? But, w where's the child? Benjamin shot me a mournful look. Lindsay insisted on carrying the pregnancy to term.